Ranking member, member for Burnaby Lougheed. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, and as always, it's, it is my privilege to participate in the discussion on behalf of Burnaby Lougheed. Um, as we are all aware, British Columbia is a trading province with a wealth of not just the natural resources, but agricultural potential as well as technological and professional services from all regions for export. Our province is inherently positioned to be Canada's natural Pacific gateway. So yes, there is no arguing that we should be seeking strategic global opportunities, and especially since the years of feed dragging has already put us behind significantly uh, our, our competitors. The latest federal advancements with South Korea, for example, will help us get our foot in the door to propel the negotiations um, with other Asian countries like Japan, and finally put our businesses on level playing field to compete with Europe and America. But now on that note, I must highlight once more that BC continues to export uh, unprocessed, low value added, and carbon intensive products most of the time, the price of which actually decreased by 27% in the last few years. All the while, we still import heavily, mostly uh, manufactured electrical and technological goods at a higher value added prices. So on top of that, we still um, import much more than we export in various industries. So that means our existing trade deficit can end up widening more and certain sectors driven into further disadvantages if the new and coming deals were to go forward poorly consulted and drafted as they have in the past. And additionally, it is imperative for us to remember that opportunities abroad and its corresponding costs for exploration and investment shouldn't be coming at the expense of the existing and developing opportunities locally right here in BC. So for one, our tourism sector has not kept pace with the rest of the economy with its growth well below the average of other industries. This is in part due to the rapidly and badly executed changes in the immigration policies in the, on the federal level um, that plummeted our immigrant, international student, tourist numbers from, uh, from the very Asian countries um, that we want to strike up trade deals with. And certainly the penny smart pound foolish approach to the BC ferries um, and the cut has put its own set of dent in the tourism sector as well. And considering that more than a third of our GDP in accommodation, food services, transportation um, is generated by tourist spending, and of course one in 15 British Columbians, depending on the jobs in this industry alone, we should be more sensitive to the businesses right here on our soil whose livelihood depends on the steady and growing international traffic as well as the provincial infrastructure and the resources to be able to cater to that. And on the agricultural side, um, because of the large government subsidies to the industrial system and imported foods, and of course the most recently the Bill 24 breaking up the ALR, it still remains difficult for our local farmers as they could struggle to compete in the BC market. We still have 95% of what BC eats being imported, and that's $25 billion, uh, $25 billion leaving the province instead of some of it at least going towards our um, local economy. And we know that the contribution of the high tech sector to the economy of this province is paramount. And while it is great that the sector has seen steady growth over the, re over the years, which is exciting, uh, we still need to remember and put things in perspective that we import four times as much as we export. Um, we still have a relatively small market share compared to all other provincial and American jurisdictions. And so our potential is far from being realized. And that's the reason why the stakeholders in the industry have long called for investment in local initiatives to grow the domestic market so we, can, so we can have the kind of economic scale required to compete in the US jurisdictions that have the nationwide market access as well as healthy local usage so that they can pursue ex export opportunities. So now all this, um, be it abroad or locally, uh, when and if the government sees the job creation, it, it, it's going to boil down to our labor readiness with trained workforce. And with BC having worse young adult employment rate, with one in five of 25 to 29 year olds not working or studying, record high rate of people leaving the province that doubled since the 90s, and the number of temporary foreign workers in the last six years being double the national average at 29%, when we have a motion on the floor calling for creation of new jobs, I, I must ask um, what will be the net creation of new jobs? And we also need to ask the second question, which is we are creating jobs for who? So thank you.